how do you plant underneath trees and shrubs in a naturalistic style? Well, it's quite a tricky question. So I've come to a friend's garden to show you how to manage it and get something beautiful like this. I'm Rosie Hardy, this is Rosie Hardy Gardening. This beautiful planting here has your large trees of the Prunus cerula and then underneath it is a nuttery. These are all hazelnuts of different forms and what is happening in here is really good to demonstrate. It's called stooling and one plant over there has been cut down for this season. It will start to regrow and what happens is from that allowing a lot of light into that area this plant over here has one year old growth on it and this is what you'd expect and then behind me here is a much older one probably two to three year old growth on it once it gets to four or five year old then it will be cut back down to the ground again and this is being done through this nuttery so that three to four are cut down one year allowed to grow the next older ones are then cut down two years later and so you get that system of pruning and regrowth. Now let's have a look at the underplanting here in this area. So with the shade that is going to come from this prunus, all the planting here is spring ephemerals. So you've got some beautiful anemones. Look at these, they're stunning. And they're just carpeting and they've seeded their way around. There are going to be Fritillaria melagris coming out later. So they're just a fraction higher. There were snowdrops in here before and now we've got narcissus of different varieties all coming through, both tall ones and much shorter ones. And they've been planted very cleverly in clumps rather than as ribbons so that you just get the odd focal point of the slightly taller narcissus going through. The fritillaria, as I say, are gonna come up and they're gonna look stunning through here as well. And then once all of that bulb growth has finished, there are also bluebells. Once that bulb growth has finished and dies back down, then the grass sward, which is here, will take over. And there are Anthrisca sylvestris in here, or cow parsley, which are gonna go up and give you that frothy white. Um, so things have been allowed to seed and sell seed around in here. And a bit later, once everything has finished, it does get mown. So it will get mown down probably around about June time. And then it's quite easy to look after. If things are going to seed around, you're finding them a little bit too invasive, then you can just take the seed heads off, give it a quick cut over, and that'll be absolutely fine. But somewhere like this, it's going to get a lot of shade because Prune is going to cast a big amount of shade on here and we are east facing on this bit so it's only getting strong morning sun. I did mention with the nuttery that it was very much a naturalistic look. I thought I'd just take a look at something that's far more formal and we have that here in this border. This is an east facing quite shady border and you know it's not very wide and it's not very long. So this is doable in a lot of people's gardens. Begonia as the ground cover. This is Bressingham white, beautiful white flowers on it. Big leaves just covering the space. Then a standard. This is a lovely Viburnum tinus. And then behind a trained pyracantha just going up the wall on wires. And this is using pig netting, which is a really good way of being able to wire in things easily. So just three simple plants in here, giving you flower, continuity of evergreen, and filling up a small space. This is something which is very much more a formal look, and some people prefer formal to naturalistic. Just duck under this tree here. These cherries are creating a really huge amount of shade, and this is a very shady, grassy area. Again, naturalistic, but this time different colours in here. You've got these beautiful tiny narcissus, you've got hellebores, you've got scillas of different types, um, and you know they are all looking really good. Once this dies back down it can just be mown over, so it's quite an easy way to give yourself colour in the spring, but then 
once the colour in the spring has disappeared here, the cherries are going to be in flower looking fantastic. And then this becomes too shady for many things to actually grow in here. I'm delighted to tell you that recently we took up a partnership with Genus Gardenware. I have used Genus Gardenware for the last two years. I find it really comfortable and it is specifically designed for you, for gardening, hard wearing clothes. It is a premium product and it has survived me working on the nursery in it, doing through all weathers, all sorts of things. And the one big thing that I really love about the trousers is that they have removable knee pads. Now in these ones, I have not got the knee pads in at the moment. They can be used for other things other than gardening if you take the knee pads out. They are stretchy. They're really, really easy to get down low, to do all of your gardening work in. That is great. And then also you have the side pockets here, which you can put your snips in, your knives, etc. Click the link in our description below to find out more about their products. This beautiful lime tree has got some interesting planting underneath it. And there are four things that I just want to talk about. This Euonymus is a really good shrub for growing underneath and in shady spots. And you can prune it back to however you want to or allow it to be more of a free sounding scape. So I've got two shrubs in here that are interesting. This, the Euonymus and the Skimmia. Before I go on to the Skimmia, I just want to talk about the Telema grandiflora rubra group. These have lovely dark red brown markings in the center there. They make lovely big clumps and then gradually they'll go up and up and up and have a beautiful green flower with a perfume. And that then gets tinged with a little bit of red at the end of the frill of the flowers. So that is a great ground cover for under trees and shrubs. This is Skimmia. And these don't get too tall. And again, they're prunable. So you can have them in this location. This one is the uh, green flowered form, really good for underneath the trees. And it then has ground cover plants underneath it. Lastly, in this area, one of my favorites for this time of the year in the spring is the Euphorbia Caracas wolfenii. And this has got beautiful flowers coming up at the moment, really fantastic, shows itself off. In semi-shade, it will get some light here, but it's in free draining soil because the tree is taking most of it. So that is the ideal place for it to be. It's not getting too damp and it's just a happy chap here underneath the lime tree along with its friends. There are plenty of other plants in these areas that you can see. The hellebores are giving great colour. There have been bulbs in here as well and there will be more plants to come through and look good later on. There will be honesty coming out. So all of this is going to create bigger height and more interest throughout the year. Just to summarise, when you are looking to source plants to go underneath your tree, just remember where the roots are likely to be and the canopy where it's going to be. So on a tree like this with a large spreading canopy, all of the area underneath that is going to be dry. Not only because there's a less light coming in, but less rainfall coming in. So it's actually the most shady part. The roots are going to go across laterally like this. And where the dots are down here, that's where you're getting the actual rainfall coming down. So all of this area onto soil, you get a little bit of seepage of water going that way. So it is a good idea to remember a basic way of understanding where the root run is. Whatever you see above ground will be mirrored below ground. And so you're gonna have a little bit of soil and root. This is gonna be dry, it's gonna be dark, except if this is a deciduous tree, in which case you can grow things which are spring flowering underneath it. So when you are sourcing for your own garden, just be aware of where the canopy is, where the direct sunlight is, and how much 
light actually penetrates underneath and you may find your planting can only be at the edge, not directly underneath the tree, unless it is spring or late autumn when the deciduous tree has lost its leaves. If it's evergreen, then this is going to be a dark shady area all the time. Thank you very much for watching and please do subscribe to the channel.